In our last build video, we looked at a complex build that elevated a somewhat lackluster subclass and exotic armor piece to extraordinary heights. Today, we're going to dive into a build that combines some of the strongest perks and abilities in the game and pushes them to the limits to see how insanely powerful we can make our character. Let's get started. The Nezarek Sin Exotic Helmet is the bread, butter, meat, and cheese of this build. On its own, it will elevate any subclass to new heights if you concede to its demands. It's the cornerstone of our build today, and everything else we'll be working with will push its already strong exotic perk over the edge. The Nezarek Sin Exotic Perk is called Abyssal Extractors. Void damage kills grant you a buff called Abyssal Extractors, which increases your ability regeneration rate and your super regeneration rate. Successive void damage kills increase the duration of the Abyssal Extractors buff up to 20 seconds. My Nezarek Sin has the perk Light Reactor on it, which grants bonus super energy on fusion rifle kills, so we'll be using the Telesto Exotic Fusion Rifle. On my gloves, we've got a Fusion Rifle Loader and Scavenger, and Fusion Rifle Reserves on our class item. This should ensure that we have a high uptime on our Telesto so we can keep our Abyssal Extractors buff running close to 100% of the time. We also have a Void Power Weapon, the Hammerhead Machine Gun. Its high ammunition capacity and efficiency will allow us to use it to keep Abyssal Extractors running should we run out of ammunition for our Telesto. Finally, on our boots, we have Dynamo. This perk grants us a large chunk of super energy when we activate our class ability in close proximity to enemies. Now, because we have massive cooldown reduction from Nezarak Sin and Abyssal Extractors, I don't feel the need to stack cooldown reduction mods for the grenade, melee, or class ability. Instead, we'll be running with three super mods, which brings our super's base regeneration time down to four minutes. I have a mobility mod in my boots because I don't like having low mobility because it makes me feel like I'm walking in mud, and our final slot has an impact mod. Realistically, any combination will work, so you can choose what you want based on what ability you want to recharge fastest. For our subclass, we'll be using the Attunement of Chaos, the top tree Voidwalker. With it, we'll have the ability to charge our grenades to increase their damage and effectiveness, and the melee ability Entropic Pull will give us grenade energy on hit. With this subclass branch, a strong case can be made for using 5 impact mods so you can exploit the grenade energy gained from Entropic Pull, but again, because of Nezarak Sin, we don't need to. Now without further ado, we're gonna head into the field and test the build. Alright, this go around we are doing the Warden of Nothing Nightfall Strike, and we're gonna see if we can exploit all of the mechanics that we have in our build. So the first thing that we're gonna do is activate our rift while we're next to this goblin so we get some free super energy and then we'll kill it with the telesto we have maximum ammo going into this so i don't feel bad about just using special ammunition to kill a single target it's totally okay we've got one more goblin in this pathway that we're going to kill abyssal extractors procced and now we get into the the real encounter there's a lot of goblins up here but one well-placed grenade should kill all of them i'm just going to watch it and enjoy the fireworks display. A couple of them snuck out, but that's okay. I'm gonna play a little bit passive here because there are a lot of enemies to deal with and they will light my ass up if I get too close. Now, one thing I always try to do when I'm using a Nezarak Sin build with the Telesto is I try to use the ammunition sparingly. So when I do get Abyssal Extractors to 20 seconds, I'll switch to my primary a little bit so I don't run out of ammo. So right now, we've already got our Nova Bomb. We're, we're not even really trying very hard to get it, but when you've got this build, it all just works. So what I wanna do here is find an opportunity to use Nova Bomb as soon as possible. And there's a, a boss enemy coming up after we get out of this long hallway. Oh no! Alright, I'm gonna try really hard not to get hit by any more trains because that is a huge momentum killer. But on the bright side, I have a Nova Bomb and I'm gonna use it to kill this Hydra. There we go, the Hydra's eliminated. The little Seeker projectiles are not gonna go look for those Cabal, but that is okay because I can throw a grenade at them. Unfortunately, not gonna keep the Abyssal Extractor is running indefinitely unless I hustle a little bit and try and get these kills. Let's switch over to the Hammerhead and light these guys up. I try as hard as I can to get a 100% uptime on Abyssal Extractors, but sometimes it just messes up. Now, I'm not going to kill that guy right away because I wanted to walk up to him to pop my Rift so I could get a little bit of extra super energy. 
So now we've got to go past a bunch of trains without getting hit. Cross your fingers. No. Go, 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 go. Okay, we made it. It's totally fine. Now we've got to go through this long corridor. And this is a good opportunity for us to build a bunch of energy and use a lot of abilities. So I'm going to throw that. Hopefully that hits where I want it to. Yes, I believe it did. I don't think we got any kills, but I can clean the rest of them up with the hammerhead. Trying to use it as efficiently as possible. Firing single shots when I can. Using it almost like a DMR. Now we've got a Nova Bomb ready. Abyssal extra Extractors is ticking down right now. So what I want to do is use the Nova Bomb before that Abyssal Extractors runs out. But I don't think I'm going to get uh, a good opportunity to. Because what I like to try whenever I have Nezarak Sin equipped is to spam my abilities as often as humanly possible. Because that makes me feel as if I'm getting the most out of my exotic equipment and my loadout. Because the real goal here is to just spam as much as we can. So we've got enemies spawning at ground level by that Hydra. And we've got more enemies up top. I don't have a grenade right now, nor do I have Abyssal Extractors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in like that, fire the Telesto, fire the Nova Bomb, and it's going to get blocked by the freaking train. So that's very unfortunate. So we're going to have to try and work a little bit harder. That rift, I don't believe I got the proc of Dynamo on that because the enemies were a little bit too far. But we have Max Abyssal Extractors running right now, so that's okay. Can't really get in close to use our melee to refresh our grenade any faster. Because there are just so many enemies running towards us. But the good thing about a large group of enemies like this clumped together is that it's very easy for us to build up extractors with the Telesto. And just like that, we've cleared out a majority of the enemies. Of course, more are going to spawn. But I believe we can get our Nova Bomb just like that by activating our Rift. And now we can send it across the way. This time, it is not going to get blocked by the train. Unfortunately, the bloom did not work the way it was supposed to. Normally, those little seeker projectiles are supposed to come out and spread the devastation a little bit farther. What am I getting killed from? Whew. Okay. <laughs> Nearly died, but it's okay. So, yeah, sometimes there are supposed to be little seeker projectiles that come out of the. Nova Bomb when you throw it when you're using the Attunement of Chaos, but sometimes they just don't come out, which can be a little bit frustrating. Now, I'm trying to save my Rift placement for when an enemy is close, and there we go. We are going to get the proc, so we almost have our super back. Thank goodness for the Rift. It's saving my ass right now because I'm taking a lot of damage. And I ran out of Abyssal Extractor, so I've got to try and kill something. That one more kill is going to be just enough to get the Nova Bomb. And I'll send it across the way. And of course, the big enemy is going to teleport. And avoid it entirely. <laughs> okay, big boy. You stay right there. Oh. Okay, he's dead. There we go. Alright, so as we go into the next room, something that I always like to keep in mind when I'm using a build with Nezarak Sin is how am I going to set up all of the, the different components? How am I going to get Abyssal Extractors running as efficiently as possible? Now, I've done the Warden of Nothing Strike several times before, so I know the layout of the enemies, I know where they're going to come from. So I can hit that guy with the Telesto, throw that big, thick grenade right into that field of Cabal. I can get into cover and activate my Rift. I don't think I got the proc on it, which is unfortunate. I didn't get the Dynamo proc, but that's okay. We can keep our Abyssal Extractors running with the Hammerhead. Try not to use too much uh, ammunition because the boss is coming up pretty soon. And this guy is going to get the grenade to the face. If I could get out of this corner, that would be really nice because I'm about to die. And let's send a Nova Bomb up to the wanted enemy and then try to get back to cover because we are getting 
dominated out here. It hurts. Actually, I don't even really want to kill the wanted enemy. He's kind of, he's kind of just irritating. I guess we're gonna have to kill him because he's blocking our pathway. Which is a bit unfortunate. I do have a grenade though, so as long as he doesn't step out of the way of it, that should tick down a lot of his health. I would really appreciate it if he would stop firing those missiles at me and blinding me. So there we go. You can't fire missiles when you're dead. Now we did run out of abyssal extractors for just a second there, but a few quick kills with our Telesto will get it right back for us. Let's melee kill that guy to refresh our grenade a little bit. We're actually running low on Telesto ammo, which is a bit unfortunate. So I'm going to switch over to the primary and let that 10 seconds run its course. And then by the time we get to the next area, we can kill a lot of enemies and start the chain rolling all over again. So this build, I think it's a bit simpler to run than the previous one that we saw with the Controverse hold, simply because all we have to do is get kills. We don't really have to think all that much when we're, when we're, when we're doing it. So let's kill one guy, throw out the Nova Bomb. The Bloom is gonna cause some pretty nice devastation. We'll charge up a grenade, throw it right into the crowd, melee for some additional grenade energy. I was too far away from any enemies to get the proc of dynamo, but that's okay. We've got our extractors running. Which is all that really matters here. Alright, we've got six seconds right now. We'll throw the Nova Bomb out. Of course, the Minotaur is going to teleport out of the way. I'm going to run not into cover. There we go. We've killed the, no the Minotaur. 20 seconds of Abyssal Extractors. We've just got to deal with all of these enemies. We can't move off of this point or it's going to explode. <laughs> All right, as we move into the final room, I'm just going to showcase the, I guess you could call it the boss damage rotation that I like to do with the Attunement of Chaos. We're going to charge up a Vortex Grenade, throw it at the boss as soon as it comes down, and then we are going to throw out our Nova Bomb, and then we're going to lay into it with our Hammerhead. So we've got the Hammerhead ready. Ooh, there's some ammo. Let's charge, throw that, Nova Bomb out. Nice bit of burst damage. And hopefully, maybe we'll get a one phase. I don't think we will, but that's okay. Maybe. Can we do it? He's almost dead. I think I'm going to die here because I'm out of position. I'm totally going to die. Let's put up a rift and kill some things with our hammerhead. Abyssal extractors running in the background. We're totally, totally going to die. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to do this again. All right, so we did mess up the final boss encounter for that Nightfall, but it's not a big deal. I'm just going to go into a Lost Sector and show off a little bit more of what the build can do in a much easier, more relaxed setting. The enemies are much less likely to obliterate me when we're just in a Lost Sector. So, just like always, we're going to start off by killing a bunch of stuff with our Telesto. We'll throw a charged grenade at that one Cabal because screw him. Then we'll melee this guy to refresh most of our grenade and we've already got a nova bomb we started off the encounter with about half of our nova bomb maybe even a little bit more so we'll throw it out we've got seven seconds of abyssal extractors that is going to go up as more things start to explode we're at 16 seconds right now and we're actually out of telesto ammo just about we've only got two shots left so i'm going to switch over to the bow and kill some things like that use my melee to kill that guy also going to refresh the grenade 12 seconds on the clock, we'll throw the grenade out, activate the rift, dynamo is gonna proc, all these enemies are surrounding me, and I did just pick up a special ammo brick, so I can rest easy and not worry, because I will be able to keep that 100% uptime on Abyssal Extractors. And that is gonna do it for the build for today. This one is an interesting compare and contrast to what we had in the previous video, where we had a very large quantity of grenades going out with the handheld Supernova 
and the Controverse Hold Exotic Gloves, but this time with the Nezirak Sin and the Attunement of Chaos, we had some serious quality going on. Our charged Vortex Grenades were huge, they covered a massive area, and they obliter- obliter- obli <laughs> obliterated anything that I threw them at and it was very satisfying. It's hard to say which of these builds I like more. I think they're both a lot of fun to play and really I don't have to choose one or the other. I could play them both so I think that's what I'm gonna do. With all of that said, we're gonna wrap it up by saying if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to provide more support than you already do just by watching, liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment, you can head over to patreon.com slash iblueairjgr and become a patron. The last thing to say before we close out, there was no new Black Armory content added this week, but there is still going to be a Black Armory related video coming later, so stay tuned for that. As always, the name of the game is Destiny 2, the name of the channel is iblueairjgr, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.